Hello and welcome back to The Gaming 5. Granny Protection Simulator 2015. Now with bigger monsters and an even more helpless old fat lady. We did give her a pretty sick frying pan though. Granny Protection Simulator 2015. Buy it now. Helping the old lady cross the street is just so much easier now. For those of you familiar with Hyrule Warriors, Dragon Quest Heroes The World Trees Yada 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 is made by the exact same developers, and is in many ways the Hyrule Warriors for the PS4 using the Dragon Quest IP. The better question at this point is if they've truly improved on the Musou formula while staying true to their licensed IP use. If you've played previous Musou games, you probably already know what to expect. You button mash a lot. It's a ton of hitting buttons and monsters until they die. However, something that I immediately noticed was how simple the combos were, especially compared to Hyrule Warriors. This unfortunately means that you'll find yourself executing the same combo ad nauseum. This is counterbalanced by a rapid character switching mechanic, allowing you to swap characters at will from your party. This does serve to create variety by allowing you to form a party with various characters, and they do play refreshingly different. Further variety comes in the use of monster medals, which is a surprisingly useful method of deploying friendly monsters on the field. In fact, it's practically required to win some missions. Sadly, no matter what I did, the insane repetition is still there, something Musou games are known for, and if you already don't like this repetition, this game won't change your mind. More interesting tidbits include the fact that the game is, at its core, more challenging than it appears, and bosses do require some strategy. There were definitely times I also failed a mission simply because strategy was actually required over button mashing. In terms of overall gameplay, it meets expectations as a Musou, and if you don't know what that means, it means destroying hundreds of enemies over and over again. I clocked a surprising 19 hours while doing some side quests along the way, including getting a snazzy sword. Speaking of the side quests, there's quite a list of them. Some are obvious collection quests, and others are challenges that actually help you along your main quest. Additionally, there are challenge missions littered all over the map that actually let you reenact several battles, including boss battles. There's also a crafting system as well, but I'll warn you now that it's entirely optional, as I only made a handful of accessories and never came back to it. Naturally, a completionist will get exorbitantly more time out of this game. Furthermore, the roster is rather small, yet in the end, I can't say this game felt empty. It might not clock enough hours to fully justify its price, especially lacking a multiplayer option in a generation of said focus, but I didn't feel ripped off, and in the next section is a bit of why that is. I will start off by saying the story itself doesn't stack up against a JRPG story, but this isn't a JRPG. The story is there, and it's developed a lot more than I thought it would be with proper amounts of dialogue. What kind of dialogue, you ask? Both text and voice. Yes, there is a proper amount of spoken dialogue and enough presentation values, including comedic relief, in the story department that I felt pleasantly surprised. Toss in properly cheesy yet well-done cartoon-style voice acting, some character development within the game itself, and you might not be so drawn aback by the idea of a Musou Dragon Quest game. Furthermore, the music matches right up there with the story. Not quite high-budget scoring, but it's good music and it's easy on the ears even if it does need to be turned down a bit. Moving into graphics, it's clean, simple, and maintains a fairly solid frame rate even during heated action. However, some niggles arise here. There's an odd micro-stutter in many situations that is usually characteristic of unoptimized CPU utilization. Lastly, one of the less positive tropes of RPGs arises here as well. Expect a clunky interface that makes turning in quests, or even just trying to sell your junk, feel like a chore. Knowing the fact that the same developers from Hyrule Warriors made this game, I had realistic expectations. While I wouldn't consider myself a Dragon Quest fan, they did well to honor the most iconic enemies and appearances Dragon Quest fans will undoubtedly love. At the end of it all, I have the same feeling I have about Hyrule Warriors. If you're a fan of the IP this game draws upon, you need not be so apprehensive. It's fun, it's competently developed in all departments, and will make you smile from time to time. Just be wary of extreme repetition, a small roster, frame rate stutters, and a cumbersome menu interface. I give Dragon Quest Heroes the World Trees yada 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 an 8 out of 10. That's it for today. Subscribe for more gaming content delivered directly to your retinas. I'll see you next time on The Gaming 5.